In this video, we're going to talk about function headers. We're going to talk about what they are and how to write them. So in order to create a function, you have to have a function header. All a function header is is kind of like a blueprint in telling MATLAB, hey, one, I'm writing a function, and two, here's some outputs and here's some inputs that I might want to throw in there. And these are the variable names that I want to call them by. The outline of every function header is as follows. First, you have the word function. You have to tell MATLAB that you're writing a function. Then after that, then you have the name of the variables that you want your function to output. After that, you have the name of your function. And then lastly, you have the name of the variables that you want to be used as inputs to your function. So let's dive a little deeper into each of these parts. So the first part of every function header is the word function. The only rule that you have to keep in mind here is that the word function must be in all lowercase. So I can type out the word function like this. And it's going to turn blue in MATLAB because function is a reserved word. And by reserved word, that just means that you can't have any variables named function inside of any of your functions. And there's many other reserved words that we'll learn about later on. So if I try to type out function with a capital F, this is wrong and won't be recognized as part of a function header. So the next part are your outputs and your assignment operator. First, it's important to note that outputs are completely optional, optional in a function header or in a function in general. By an output, all that means is that your function is passing a value from your function to some external variable. But this isn't necessary. You could have a function that doesn't necessarily pass any values, it just does something. So let's say I had a function that just opens up a new window, or a function that clears my command window. Those are all functions that necessarily don't have outputs. So let's say I wanted to write a function header that had no outputs. So for no outputs, there's two ways of doing that. First, I still have to have the word function which will turn blue, and then after that, so this is one way, then after that, if I have no outputs, I can just leave a blank, and then we're gonna get to the next part there. So just nothing there, all right? That's not an underscore, it's just nothing. The second way is I can explicitly tell MATLAB that, hey, I have no outputs for you. So I can have the word function, and then in order to explicitly say that to MATLAB, what I do is I have empty square brackets. These are square brackets that's um, next to the P on your keyboard. So I have empty square brackets and then I have an assignment operator. That's explicitly telling MATLAB that I'm assigning this to nothing. So I have no outputs to this function. So let's say I do have outputs. Outputs. Um, I can have one output. I can have multiple outputs. So if I had one output, Let's say, and I can name my outputs whatever I want. Let's say this output is called um, out1, right? I can just say the name of the variable. And if I choose to have an output, then I also have to have that equal sign, okay? And it's important to note here that um, I can put my output in square brackets if I want. So here in this example, I don't have square brackets around my output, around my single output, but I could put them if I wanted to. Either are fine. However, let's say I had multiple outputs. So if I had something like function, and let's say I had multiple outputs, out one and out two. In this case, the square brackets are necessary. I have to have square brackets around multiple outputs. So I would have something like out one, out to, and then my equal sign. And so one more thing, if I have multiple outputs, there's another optional thing that I can add. So in between my outputs, I can have a comma. I don't need it there, but it's good practice. And MATLAB will actually underline it and tell you that, hey, you should put output, you should put commas in between your outputs. 
So after the word function in your outputs, the next thing is the name of your function. There's two things that you have to remember about this. The first one is that the name of your function follows the convention used with naming variables, meaning that the name of your function has to start with a letter and can contain numbers and underscores, but can't contain any special characters. And secondly, whatever you name your function is the same name that you have to save it as. It has to be the same name as the file. So let's do an example. So let's say I had a function that had one output called out one, then I'm at equal sign. Then the next part is the function name. So let's say I call it my func for my function. So the last part of your function had are your inputs. So just like the outputs, the, having inputs to a function is completely optional. So having a function that doesn't have any inputs is very similar to a script in the sense that every time you run it, you're just going to be running the same lines of code. Your inputs aren't going to actually be changing. Um, so, so you can have no inputs. So suppose you have no inputs. How do you dictate this? So there's two ways. One, right after the function name, you can just have nothing. So if I had, let's say, I was just starting at my function name. Actually, let's write the whole thing out. So if I had function, let's say I had my out one assignment operator, then I had my func, right? And if I have no inputs, I can just leave it there. Another way is I can explicitly tell MATLAB, hey, I have no inputs. And you can do this by using empty parentheses. So let's write this so I can have function out one, my func. And then I can explicitly tell MATLAB, hey, I have no inputs by doing open and close parentheses. Now, just like outputs, I can have none, one, or multiple. So if I have one input, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to place that inside of those parentheses. So if I had if I do have inputs, let's write this all out. So function oh, out one. Oh, got to change the color. Out one equals my func. And then let's say I had an input called n1. Then I would just place that inside of the parentheses like that. So that's with one input. Now I can have multiple inputs as well. And so let's write that out. I'm kind of running out of room. Let's write this over here. Function out one my func. So let's say I had multiple inputs here. So I have n1 and I have n2. Unlike outputs, if you have multiple inputs, the comma is mandatory. In outputs, it was optional, but in inputs, the comma is mandatory. And that's it. So let's go over this problem. So the problem says to write a valid function header for a function named myfunc that has two inputs and two outputs. So every function header starts with the word function. We have to remember that it has to be all lowercase. So then after that, now we have our outputs. So the problem says we're going to have two outputs. So since we have multiple outputs, we have to encase those in square brackets. And we can call them whatever we want. So we'll call them out1 and out2. And I have to have my assignment operator as well. And so since I have multiple outputs, I have the decision of including a comma or not including a comma between them. I'm just going to put one just because it's good practice, but it's not necessary. After that comes the name of my function. So that's my func. And then after that, then we have our inputs. So you have to encase those in parentheses. And since I have multiple inputs, I'll just call them n1 and n2. I have to have the comma in between them. The comma is mandatory. So let's go over this problem. This problem is full of little tricks. But let's go through each answer and see why it's valid or it's not valid. So the first one, we have the word function. So that's, that's right, the first word is function. And then we have the word out. So in this case, I'll tell you right now that this is 
a valid function head. It looks weird because I just have the word out there, but in this case here, with this syntax of how I'm arranging stuff, out is the name of the function. So this is a function header of a function with no inputs and no outputs. That sounds weird, but they exist. Another way of writing this, just to make it a little bit more clear, is that I could have said function, and since I have no inputs, or no outputs, I mean, I could explicitly have my square brackets. Then I could have the name of my function. And then, since I have no inputs, I could just have empty parentheses like that. However, like I said before, having inputs is completely optional, and having outputs is completely optional as well. So I don't need these things there. Okay? So the next one is not a valid function header. Very small, but here we have capital F. Oh, I guess I wrote over that, but capital F. So we can't have capital F in function. The next one is a valid function header. We have the word function. We have, we have our output. We have one output. We have the assignment operator. We have the name of my function. And then we have the input inside of parentheses. It follows all the rules. The next one is not a valid function header. This is because since we chose to have an output, we have to have the assignment operator. So in between here has to be the assignment operator. And since I just have one output, I don't need to have the square brackets. I could if I wanted to, but it's not necessary. And the last one is a little tricky as well but it is also a valid function header. So you might have gotten tripped up because I have the word in here and the word out here. So in is the name of an output and out is the name of an input. And that's completely fine. MATLAB has no clue what you're naming these things as long as they're not reserved words. The only thing that MATLAB knows is the position of stuff. So since I have a variable called in in that position, MATLAB is going to treat that as an output. It's not just going to say, oh, he has his output called in, so he, he or she definitely wants it to be an input now. That, that would be too much stuff. So in this case here, this is the name of a function with an output called in and an input called out.